Okay. Good evening to all. My name is Iris from the C-Focus program team, welcoming you to C-Focus 2021 gallery webinar series, where we invite participating exhibitors to present a live digital event to our audiences. The series is also screened on site at C-Focus curated Hyper Horizon at Tanjong Pagar District Park. So if you are joining us from there, welcome, and we hope you enjoy the exhibition. Our presentation today is from Silver Lens with director Isa Lorenzo, who will be joined by artists Paul Martinez and Gregory Halili. Silverlands was established in 2004 and is based in Manila. Though initially built to showcase photographic works, its platform has now expanded to highlight a wide range of practices and expressions within the region's contemporary art practice. Now, 16 years later, Silverlands represents 25 artists and continues to make headway in contemporary Southeast Asian art. I will now hand the time over to Silverlands for their presentation. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A function as at the bottom of your screen. Isa, over to you. Thank you, Iris. Good evening, everyone. I'm happy to be uh, here um, virtually in Singapore, but uh, on site here in Manila to do a presentation with Gregory Halili and Paul Martinez, who we are showing on site at Helutrans for the second, um, our second participation at C Focus. So, um, that was a pretty extensive introduction that Iris gave us. So I'm just gonna go straight through to what we're gonna talk about today, which is called Trouble in Paradise. So our presentation uh, presents two very sought after artists, Paul Martinez and Gregory Halili. They are both painters, but on the surface appear completely opposite, judging by their works. Gregory makes very detailed and aesthetically beautiful miniature paintings on natural materials, mother of pearl, capiz oysters, corals, and ivory. How? Greg, can you wave if they can see, so they can see. Okay, Pau, a figurative painter, makes emotional works that are known for their characters in landscapes of disintegration and urban scenarios. His are not beautiful paintings in the con conventional sense, nor are they meant to be, but they are emotional, alive, and very rich. Both artists make works which are soulful and contemplative. Aside from the COVID-19 pandemic that ground life to a halt, both artists bore the brunt of natural calamities in 2020. The Halili studio was affected by the Ta'al volcano eruption of January of that year, covered under feet of ashfall, while Pau's studio was flooded by a three meter storm surge brought by the typhoon Ulysses in November of 2020 as well. Coming from the Philippines where nature must be treated with utmost respect, the survival instinct and push to continue making art characterizes both these artists. Something we would like to talk about in this digital event titled Trouble in Paradise. So I wanted to start off with a video. So Pao, can you wave? This is Pao. Um, we're gonna start off with a virtual studio visit. We prepared videos uh, starting with Pao and then Greg. After moving here to the Philippines, I became interested, of course, with the natural materials that, uh, that can be found here. I've been exploring for the past few years mother of pearl so it's just natural for me to continue uh, exploring a different type of material that's also based here in the Philippines and then naturally Capiz is uh, you know one of them you know Capiz is uh, you know part of our heritage it's used as a window pane I think it's called a window pane oyster I First, I would do the eyes, you know, as a as um, as an homage to relatives and to loved ones, because the eyes really evolved from what it's called the lover's eye. You know, it's a portrait of your loved one as a keepsake, and and it progressed to more of a kind of memento, more of a memento mori, mm. and, and from that it evolved to the skull shells. My theme has always been fragility and you know in terms of uh, life and death you know our connection with nature and then after seeing 
you know, uh, coral bleaching and all these uh, devastation nature. So, you know, Capiz is really has that quality that you know, that's uh, that sense of fragileness in material. Well, there, there are a lot of process to, you know, to the final work, but uh, to start off, I carefully select the rock piece and then starts like this. This is a older version. This is a, another species of it. It's more flat, it's more white. And you know, I, I use acid to actually thin this, you know, to, to get the more I don't know, ethereal quality. You know, it's more lightness, it's more translucent. It gets to the point where it's breaking. So you know, it just it's more it's like a metaphor of <clears throat> our life. You know. It's really on the balance. And then from mm -hmm. there I cut the shell, uh, shape it to the size of maybe like a small a rectangle or a, or a square, like a window. And then from there it's just tedious process of paints and, and etching. Um, yeah, the images, uh, some of these are life experiences, like the Ta'al scene, for example, or the volcano eruption. You know, it happened here, so I wanted to depict that. Because experiencing that uh, made me aware of how vulnerable we can be. So we're at the point of life and, life and death, really. And, and I wanted to depict that with the work showing how fragile life can be. <clears throat> when, when I work, I, I, I think of myself like a, like a fiction writer or filmmaker. I think the purpose of painting is also to create realities. It's like I'm creating my reality and then there's this whole internet, like truth, and then like telling me what to do or how, how to think. Sometimes it's too much information. So, so I remind myself not to be online too much. Yeah, I, I want to create characters. Yeah, sometimes I deliberately like do a, like a problematic image or composition and like use colors that don't match like the idea of like the ugly composition or painting and making it somehow work. That's why I paint like, like I'm attracted to like, uh, like childish paintings. And I work, I want to work on things that are not automatically like nice, uh, making boring, you know, like banal things work, at, like, making it interesting. Yeah, maybe it's like play, playing playing with like icons, like changing them up. Yeah, playing around with a bit of uh, history. And yeah, painting, painting history too. Yeah, the new, and you know, uh, when you go to the Louvre, blah, 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 classical paintings, new paintings, I see myself like a, like a traditional painter. You know, that, that cliche thing of a painter. And paintings in general, Many of them are from movies, stuff that resonates to me. Like the black, the black one within the news. It's from the Lords of Salem, that movie. It's a coven of witches. It's like a cult. Sometimes nothing, sometimes it's... I, I just look from like within and then paint like without references to But I, I think the job of the painter is to, you know, is to yeah, filter out things like I think images goes through you. For me, I don't, I don't want to make things like spoon feeding and literal. I think the paintings, it's, it's like a coded message. But there's some political angles to it. And, but I, I don't want it to be like literal. I work my way around like different things. Yeah, yeah, that's why I think like uh, I, I'm, I just paint, I'm, I'm just a painter. I just look in the world and paint. <laughs> or 
romantic na yan. Okay. Um, so thanks, Paul, and thanks, Greg. Thank you. So I just want to start it off by um, saying I'm really glad that we paired the two of you up because I think this is the first time you're ever showing together. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's special that way for, for us. Uh, the title of our presentation, Trouble in Paradise, came from uh, work, um, one of Paul Martinez's works. And um, I wanted to ask the artist to weigh in on this title. Um, so who wants to go ahead? Who wants to go first? Um, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, the title is, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory at this time. <laughs> so yeah, the world is, you know, being destroyed. And yeah. Um, Greg, maybe you can tell us about the volcano. Well, uh, well, 2020 will really be an unfor you know, unforgettable year. Because my, my year started with a bang, literally. Uh, I can clear, clearly remember swimming with my daughters around 11.30, 12.30. And then around 1 o'clock, the volcano exploded. So on this clear day, um, you know, all of a sudden, it, everything turned gray. Around 30, all the ash falls started coming down. So, I mean, I was excited because, uh, um, you know, it's my first time to see it. And it was really beautiful. It's like snow in a way, but but when it started coming down, um, there was this uh, toxic fume. So it has that um, uh, smell that's fairly sulfuric. So uh, you get, you got, serious you know and um and, and, and then from there uh, it's uh you know it, it's it's really at the point where you know this is not not uh, not all beauty yeah um and but you said that you were excited and there was it felt you know there was this sense of when did this excitement turn into you know? no, yeah, I was excited at first because when it, when it was um, start start attaching to the ground or, or falling to the ground, it, you know everything is, is it's so uh, surreal, you know. And so so I was excited about that. Visually, it's beautiful, but then it, it got um, you know over, over, overwhelming with, with the smell. Maybe right. a few hours later, around three thirty, you know, yeah. it's around one, and then when when everything when when ash gathered around 3.30, you know, it started accumulating to the point where the smell is unbearable. So I had to close all the windows, you know. Um, I mean, I'm just lucky I had a lot of plants. Right, right. <clears throat> that really sustained us. Right. So I'm showing you the paintings now of the presentation. And these are Pao's works. And this is um, the work that actually um, is the title of our presentation, Trouble in Paradise. So, um, Pao, any thoughts about the, the work? This work? Yeah. Uh, I think these portraits are like, like lulled individuals, you know, like staring into the void. Like, like I don't know, like, uh, like blank portraits, I think of them as. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. So, so if, what did you guys learn from your studio? So, so Pao, um, as I mentioned in the intro, your studio was sort of wrecked, like. Yeah, uh, yeah, I got flooded. My studio the, is like, like totally flooded. Right, so. right, right. How was that? Um, what was that experience like? And what did you take away from, um, that? Learn from that? Yeah. Uh, I learned that, you know, like all your like future plans, like your, uh, like, you know, in, in a matter of hours can be like destroyed. Right, right. So, you know, like my files, my, like some, some of my pictures, like portfolios. So um, it, it's about, yeah, th things are temporary. 
<laughs> right, right, right. Um, if you, if there was something that you wanted, uh, if there was one work you wanted to talk about in the series, um, do you guys have any favorites? Um, I like Deep End for me. <clears throat> okay, let's go to deep end. Uh, the coral. I mean, they're, they're, all, they're all my favorites, but uh, this one for me resonates. I say, I mean, as a, as a child, I used to see a lot of, uh, you know, really full corals. I mean, you go to Batangas, it's full corals, uh, anywhere, all the beaches. But, but um, recently, uh, you know, I mean, I'm an avid, uh, I, I go to the beach a lot. So, and, and I often snorkel. So I got to see the, uh, you know, devastation of, of, uh, of how it was and up to now. So I saw, actually saw coral bleaching. I saw, you know, um, cleared, uh, what do you call this? Like a, almost like a bay, you know, literally it's like dead, you know? So, um, I mean, you can tell there's remnants of corals yeah. there, but everything's destroyed. So for me, that's, um, something I kind of wanted to depict. Right. Yeah. You know, so the, the Philippines and as Singapore is, we are equatorial and mm -hmm. we really are the ones bearing the brunt of all this climate change. Yeah. I mean, the Philippines, we started last year with a volcanic eruption, which had nothing to do with climate change. Yes. You know, right. it's just the way things are. Yeah. Then of course we had COVID, which was just something else. And then we had floods, uh, typhoons. <clears throat> Uh, earthquakes. Um, this seems to be, you know, we are, we are sort of at the cross, which is what the title of your volcano painting is. You know, it's that's that's what it is. Yeah. Cross. So, uh, Pao, any any thing um, about? Maybe that the the one doing yoga, titled self help guru. Okay, let me move to it. This yeah. Yeah, that piece. Uh, yeah, I think it's a. Yeah. I, <laughs> so so that's yeah, doing yoga and then having this uh, yoga instructional. But yeah, it's also about uh, the current like self development addiction. Like uh, like looking for. Uh, you know, you know, you know those you know ch YouTube channels that gives you know like advices like yeah. life, like how, how to improve yourself. Yeah, yeah, but but I'm wondering why does she have no clothes? <laughs> uh, maybe that's the way to go, you know. So, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, self these like gurus turn, turns out to be like like fake gurus and then like extreme positivity turns into like toxic, right. like self-obsession, like perfection. Right, right, right. Yeah, and we're yeah. always asking the internet for help. Yeah, yeah, we're all, we're all guilty for that. Right, right. And then, yeah, we, yeah so. So interesting that um, the whole of 2020, so prior to 2020, all of Pao's paintings were sort of outdoors in an exterior landscape. <clears throat> in 2020, he started making paintings that were indoors. So can yeah. you talk a about that? Yeah, may mm, yeah maybe like, like me, myself, is like uh, getting more and more like introverted, like more... <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, we can't go out, but but in a way, I'm like being being an artist. I, I'm kind of enjoying it, you know. Because, right. Like uh, just be in the studio and then. Right, right. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. The people here are like inside, inside, uh, yeah, inside. But there's some elements of the outside, like that painting, and then uh, the one in the phone. It's like connecting outside. Being a uh, yeah, be uh, uh, the desire to like you know disconnect, but some somehow be connected. Yeah. <laughs> so it's this you know self isolation, but really just but also wanting to be part of what's going on. Yeah, like uh, some 
like social media, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to be on social media, but you end up using it anyway. Yeah. We're all good. We're all good. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, yeah. you both have very active um, social media accounts. So Pao is, um, he's at sewage worker. Yeah, that's my AKA. Worker. And Greg is at Gregory Halili. And have you guys been really active? <clears throat> I mean, this whole <clears throat> pandemic. Were you really, were you posting a lot of stuff? Were you trying to? <laughs> Greg? Yeah, yeah, Greg, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm active. I'm, I'm, I'm a... Yeah, I'm active too. So I say that's, um, well, yeah, that's uh, my way to the world, you know? I, it's hard to go out. That's how I see the world. I mean, nowadays, that's what how everybody really looked. Right. Uh, Right, right, right. Um, you know, for for what all everything that we've been doing, I, I just want to say that 2020 is turning out to be one of our busiest years here in Manila ever, and it's it's such an eye opener because we've had not you know a number quite a number of visitors to the gallery, and I realized that um, even though we're not high up on the list of like you need us to survive, we have become super essential in providing just joy and pleasure um, showing art. And I think Pao and Greg, even if 2020 sort of shut the world down, their studios were super active. Um, I think this must have been your most active year, no, Pao? Yes. <laughs> yes, ironically. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And Greg, you too? Was, was your studio super active? It's active to say, you know, it's... What we have to do it we just have to you know survive and so everything behind you was that made during 2020 uh no about more than half about yeah. so it's really just playing Amazing. you know it's not it's not you know i don't consider it really it's more it's more like a different direction right right, right. A point where <clears throat> look back is just the one is this the direction where I really want to go? So, you know, not sure if these are the works. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, Pao, anything, mm. anything you guys want to say to each other or ask each other? Um. <laughs> or say ask me, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we have any questions. Maybe the maybe the audience wants to jump in and ask some questions of us. Um, let me see. No questions. Okay, let's. I'm gonna, there. I'm gonna ask. Um, wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, can you tell us about? Because you're also a musician and you work with noise which is its own yeah genre. that's so can you tell us about that yeah that's my second life <laughs> yeah i've been doing that like for like 15 years now like you know like a... so is your handle sewage worker yeah that's that's my aka oh. and um yeah so yeah I, I i regularly perform in the in the experimental music scene here in manila Right, right, right. And so, yeah, so I'm, I'm part of that. Yeah. The world too. So, yeah, yeah so side by side with yeah, painting and yeah. so. Yeah. So Greg, what's your, what's your hidden talent? I know it, I, I, I'm going to give you a clue. Your garden. Garden, gardening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually lucky that, um, you know, I have all these plants before the pandemic. So pandemic. I mean, Pandemic. So some of these plants I can't even afford now. You know. So. Yeah. For for the audience, the price of plants has skyrocketed because everyone now is a plant um, person. Is growing plants. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm jacking up the price now. Yeah. Okay. So we have a question from Chris Ardenia. Question for Gregory: Do you seal your paintings after you etch the shells? Ah, uh, no. No, no, I don't seal them. Um, well, I played around sealing it, but there's a when you varnish it, there's a point I know, where where you lose the luster of the shell and you lose the, you know, it's it's almost like 
in painting, it's almost like the atmospheric perspective. So you lose that depth when you varnish it. So, and then I kind of want to uh, have that haze or more, or more uh, texture. I say once you, once you seal it or varnish it, you lose a certain texture that's uh, integral to the painting. Right. So. Also, when, um, just to add to that, I mean, for uh, when you see Greg's collection of brushes, you'll realize that a lot of them are single hair brushes. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's about, uh, no, it's about, uh, <laughs> about the tip, you know, not really single. So it's far, it's about <laughs> 20 here that goes into one. But um, I mean, you know, that's, uh, that's, uh, well, I, I want to get the intensity yeah. of, of, of the work. Right. The way to do that, the brush. Okay. Uh, any parting words, guys? Anything, any last thing you want to say? Um, no, I think oh, no. this pandemic, you just have to surround yourself with art. Right? It's, uh, that's how we heal. Right. So. so good. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, yeah. Art is the way. Art. Yeah. <laughs> it's enhancing. Art is enhancing. Art is the way. Art yeah. The way. <laughs> um, all right. I think that's that's it. Uh, if there are no more questions, we are good. I'd like to thank everyone for being here. Thank you so much, Singapore. Thank you, Pa. Thank you, Greg. Please follow us on Instagram at Silver Lens Galleries. And um, if you're interested in any of the pieces, you can email us at info at silverlensgalleries.com. Thank you, Iris. Thank you, guys. Thank you, too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Isabel Thank you, Iris. And Greg, thank you. Thank you thank also. for allowing us to peek inside your studio and your practice. Um, that concludes the presentation from Silver Lens. Um, as we are already at 7 p.m., we can proceed with the next presentation of the evening from Art Quarters.